Alrighty, so here I am back with how to do a 540. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into things. So when you're coming into the jump, again, like almost every single trick I've taught so far, you need to make sure that you have forward chin pressure and then you do start crouching down as you approach the lip of the jump. And the only difference between a 360 and a 540 is you're gonna set a tiny bit harder, but for the most part, going from a three to a five is gonna be actually extremely easy as long as you have your threes very comfortable and proper. So for most tricks when you're skiing, if you want to do like a 360 and then say go to 540, the set's actually going to be the same and it actually might be a little bit easier because on the last 180 you're going to be able to spot your landing. Whereas if you go from like say a 540 to a 720, so you go from switch to straight, they're actually going to be two completely different sets and I'll go into that more when I um, teach you guys how to do 7s and 9s. Okay, so once you've pretty much mastered 360 grabs, all you're gonna do differently is as you come up, you're still gonna come up crouching down with your shin pressure, and then as you start approaching the lip of the jump, you're not gonna wind up, but you are gonna bring your arms and your shoulders up, and you're gonna use them as a T again. You really wanna make sure you get those T set fives good, because once you start doing this, getting them with grabs and landing properly is gonna make a world of a difference. So as you come up, I would suggest maybe doing a couple big T-set threes and throwing a little bit hard and maybe even opening up opening up early. That way you know you have time to get the five around. But um, once you feel comfortable with that, as you come up, doing a five compared to a three is really just gonna be a big commitment thing. You really just need to come up and then kind of tell yourself mentally that uh, you're gonna throw a five no matter what. Skiing's a pretty big mental game and going from three to five is definitely gonna prove that a little bit for you. So when you come up, make sure you have a forward chin pressure, you kind of crouch down a little bit, and you want to explode off the takeoff a little bit more than you would with a three. That way you have a little bit more energy in the air, and that when you come down to land, that you have a little bit more uh, stability and that you won't kind of slip out or land backseat or whatever. The more effort and pop you put into the takeoff will actually allow you to have more control over the outcome of your landing and your um, time in the air. So you watch right here, we can watch Kiernan Fagan come up and he pops really smoothly actually and does a really nice T5, but he comes up a little short so he brings his knees up to make sure he can absorb the landing correctly and not fall. Since he had a really nice takeoff in the air when he realizes that he might not be rotating fast enough, he's able to bring his knees up and control the outcome a little bit better. When I first taught you how to T set three, I kind of taught you like keep your body like a T so you know keep your whole legs and your hips and everything straight and your arms out. But when you go for a five, I might suggest when you start doing your threes to warm up for it, to maybe explode a little bit more so that way you kind of open your body up and like you have more control and you kind of you understand and you can like prove to yourself that you're popping off the jump. And when you do this, it should help you know get the, the five four rotation around because you're kind of learning to put more energy into the trick because the five is going to take a little bit more than a three would. You want to make sure that you don't like mentally scare yourself that you're doing a 540 instead of a 360. Just think of it as an extra 180 and um, that should help a little bit. But don't wind up if you want, that's kind of where I'm getting at with this. Like if you wind up and try and spin a whole lot more, then you're going to end up being really stiff in the air and that's when you tend to go off axis. So if you watch this video, my friend Nick, um, this is when he first started trying them a long time ago. He kind of winds up and when he does this, he like goes off axis a little bit and he wasn't prepared to land and he didn't pop enough either, which resulted in him leaving forward and he actually couldn't take it and that's why he fell. This is why I stress popping so hard and not winding up and pulling your arms in. It's important to have them out like a T because it gives you balance in the air and the popping will give you more control and so when you land you don't have to worry about leaning forward and not being able to control the fact. Okay so once you get your fives down and you like, are able to land a rotation and you want to start doing grabs in them, you um, you want to make sure that you're popping really hard and the harder you jump coming off the lip and the more strong you are then the easier it is going to then it's going to be to grab just like in the 360 so when i tell you the 360 you know like you do the 180 then you grab and you do another 180 for a 540 i'm going to go ahead and say you should do the 270 grab 270 but um the more comfortable you get with the trick and the easier it becomes for you and the bigger the jump you'll be able to either grab a little bit earlier a little bit later and um you can definitely mess with it a little bit. Everything I teach you is just kind of a foundation you can start with, and then from once you become comfortable, you can kind of tweak it wherever you want. So on um, this five right here, I kind of grab a little bit early, and I'm able to kind of slide my hand up and um, tweak it pretty hard. But uh, a couple years ago, and actually it was the first 540 I ever did that um, was with a nice grab. I uh, just kind of barely went down, grabbed it, and that's it. And then the next year on this five, it's another five mute. 
I um, was able to tweak it a little bit, but the more comfortable you get, you see now this is last year, I was able to tweak it again, like this is what I just showed you, um, all the way in my back, and it was probably the nicest five, one of the nicest fives I've ever done. I think this was actually in the first season edit I ever put out, and it was a decent five, you know, I landed all right, but um, you can tell since I didn't pop that hard, I wasn't able to get my grab, and it just kind of goes to show that everyone's got to start somewhere and just keep practicing. You really shouldn't have much uh, trouble going from a three to a five, especially with the grabs as well. Like I said, it's just going to take a little bit of practice. Um, every trick you do skiing, don't ever just do it once. If you want to get actually good at skiing and you know progress a lot, you're going to have to repeat the trick a lot and you know practice. Like there's nobody out there that's good at skiing or pro that um, doesn't practice all the time. You know, like no one just gets it. Like it always takes a lot of hard work and effort. So don't go out and just film it once and never do the trick again. That's kind of what I used to do. Go out, practice all the time. You know, have fun, do it with your friends, push each other. But um, just remember that it does take practice and the more you do it, the easier it does become. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Go ahead and follow Ski Tutorials on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then um, go ahead and also check out Truman Davenport, go check out his SoundCloud at True Nova, and um, he's one that made the beat for this video, and I just I think it helps make the video a little bit more interesting, a little bit more entertaining to watch, and it's just a really sick beat as well. So go ahead and check him out and give him a follow. Uh, I'll see you guys next week.